I've come here to London and in particular this is one of the places that holds a great deal of significance to us as Aboriginal people. The key factors that influenced me to come here is the coat of arms. The coat of arms of Australia is represented by kangaroo and emu, but we have learned that the coat of arms of Australia is not really a coat of arms. It's a trademark. But, like these ear symbols that are on all of these places, and if you look at that one across the road, the City of London School, these no doubt are approved coats of arms. What we don't like in Australia for our mob is on my father's family, the emu is a key totepic symbol for the clan. On my mother's um, grandmother's side, on my mother's mother's side, matriarchal, um, we have the kangaroo. Because my grandmother's grandfather, his bloodline is kangaroo, red kangaroo. It's important to understand the significance of these two animals, or bird and animal. They symbolize flight in the sky, and the other one symbolizes the ground and the blood. And so what we need to do is say to Australia and the public, you have stolen something from us. And you can't use our symbols as your totemic heritage because it's not your totemic heritage. And this here place, a court of chivalry, is a place that, de that determines people's symbolism in their inheritance. And so if you look at all the cases of the court of chivalry, it's about people using coats of arms, using symbols that belong to correct rightful inheritors of the symbols. And of course, if people can't prove that they have some sort of ownership of that symbol that they're using, then of course all the cases here that's been heard here since the 1300s and back beyond have all found in favour of the people who are the inheritors of that bloodline and those symbols. Now, why we Aboriginal people in Australia fail to understand these connections, given all this so-called education that they've given us, is beyond me. It just shows that they are actually dumbing people down in Australia, they're not educating them. And the education that people are getting in Australia is limited to their ability to be able to have a mortgage and a high purchase deal to buy cars and furniture, do some savings and get themselves a block of land and live in a little house, which then is their complete inheritance. But for us as Aboriginal people, our whole landscape is an, is a, an inheritance um, factor that deals with our connection to country, not to private property. And so the symbolisms that are there, those signs, those indicias, insignias, that we do have painted on our rocks, engraved in the rocks in the deserts, these are our symbols. This is our bloodline inheritance. This tells our stories. And you see, these people here, believe it or not, they understood it when they came. They understood it because this is their heritage. This is their history. And so they were quick to destroy our history. They were quick to destroy any semblance of association that we had with our own indicias, our own material culture, and those symbols. And they took them from us. And they took it from us to deprive us of it. And they did it deliberately so that we could not come back through that bloodline inheritance 
and take back that which is ours. And so we, we now have to understand that when they came there and destroyed all our sacred sites and took our objects and put them in museums, and even to this day, under the Native Title Act, get people to go out and pay them $800 a day to walk country to clear the land for them, they pick up things that are symbols of ours. That's our history. And by us removing it, we are giving them ownership. We are giving them ownership because the people who are what they call in the state of New South Wales and a New South Wales Act to conform with the Native Title Act, it's called registered Aboriginal parties. Now, all you have to do is say you have an interest in that area when a mining company finds some mineral or oil or gas and they want to use it. So under the cultural heritage factor, they ask us to go out there, they pay $800, some ridiculous amount of money a day, and it could be 10 days, so there's eight grand, yeah, for 10 days walk of country. So our people, because of their, their impoverishedness, they won't knock that back. They're not going to say no to that. They're going to go out there and walk. And then when they get a piece of paper then and say, is there anything here that's of cultural significance to you? You either say yes or no. Then they give you another agreement. Let's catalogue it. We GPS it. We put it in a box. And we put it in storage somewhere. Now, people, that's given away our culture. Yeah? And that's very cheap when you consider that you say that you represent your children, their grandchildren, etc., and for generations to come. You are actually giving it all away right now. You're destroying everything. Yeah? And you're giving to the white man everything that he wants from you. That is, your informed consent to destroy your culture and remove yourself from the land by clearing the land for him. This place here would never, if we took it to court, would never allow that to happen. But our people don't know about European heraldry.